Hello, uh, my name is Jeff, and I uh, wanted to put together some ideas of the Hyperloop that Elon Musk is working on. Uh, I've been very intrigued by the whole project and how it's kind of all integrated together. Um, so for the last few days I've been thinking about how it could work and how it could be put together, and I've kind of come up with a few ideas and put it into a 3D rendering that you can see off to the right here, but I'll show you that in a second. So what we know f so far is that it should go around 800 miles per hour, maybe up to 1,000. It's going to be a cross between a Concorde, a rail gun, and an air hockey table. So those are, I think, really telling bits of information. Um, he also said that it could be run by solar power um, and that um, it could store energy. So the closest thing that's come up is this, uh, this image that some people have seen. It's by Jean Gardy and he had a conversation, a quick conversation with Elon over Twitter um, about this and uh, probably the guess, best, uh, closest scene I've seen so far, uh, paw down about two meters. I didn't really use the two meters because that's highly variable and it's about two meters. I use one point or 2.8 meters for my pod width. But anyway, so yeah, what you have here, and, and Elon Musk has also confirmed that it will have air in the column. Um, but I think the way it's going to work is a little bit different than what uh, John here has put together. Not to say it's wrong, but it is going to be a loop. Obviously the name Hyper Loop. So the air will continue in a constant loop around, just like this one in the pods. Everybody's thinking it might be a round pod, but I, I think it's going to be a square pod. And, and so what I'll do is I'll show uh, what I have in the 3D rendering here. And first off, I want to say um, I, uh, I work in renewable energy and renewable energy implementation. Um, uh, I've won a few awards just through some contests that I've entered. and So I really like integrating new ideas together. And, that's why I've kind of gotten interested in this. Um, I hope that some of my ideas are wrong. I hope that there's good conversation about this. I really hope to see the, 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 the initial version. I think we need good alternative means of transportation uh, besides airplanes and, and stuff that can be run on renewable energy. So here's what I got. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the uh, levitation of how the crafts will stay up, or the pods, I should say. I think they're going to be square. I think the, the whole unit is going to be square. Uh, with a round one, you can't have air loft because if there's too much weight on one side, it'll rotate, it'll roll. Um, so, you know, may, maybe uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be a square. Um, so the way this can work is it, ha it can happen one of, th or one of three ways, or two of three ways it can happen together. My first thought was that he, he mentioned the air hockey table. Well, the air hockey table has holes in the bottom of it, and with a whole bunch of holes, you need to push air up into it. But that becomes really problematic for having to push air up all the time throughout this system. So I thought maybe that's way too complicated, way too much effort, way too much energy. Um, so I was talking with somebody, and I thought about that ground effect. Somebody else mentioned that on the internet as well. The ground effects, where it's basically just your your you're wedging air underneath that then is compressed and then keeps you aloft. But what happens if your vehicle stops? What happens if you can't keep moving? Well, the, that's a problem. It will just sit there. It'll just become stuck on the ground if you're only using the, law, the ground effect. Um, so the third option is, what happens if you flip, the, flip the, uh, the air hockey table over and the holes are like a hovercraft? So there's a whole bunch of perforation at the bottom that this is pushing air down below, uh, and that will keep it aloft. It'll, it'll solve all the problems. It would run on an obviously a very flat surface like on the left here, but I thought I'd keep the, the, the circles um, for like the other, other, other thought that I had, just because. So this is a very flat surface. This could work with an inverted hockey table um, levitating the, the pod. Um, so we have Elon here standing in the, uh, the, the uh, tube. Uh, but, you know, just for size comparison. Um, it's about 2.8 meters across, like I mentioned. He also mentioned it's going to be uh, like a railgun. So a railgun is just uh, a very simple technology that accelerates uh, objects through magnetic repulsion and attraction. So just like that on the side, and it's kind of like a maglev, but doesn't need to require it to uh, levitate it anymore. 
These can be very small, and when they're small, they don't need to require a lot of energy or even uh, cost of, of producing. So I thought, well, maybe this is how the railgun aspect comes into, comes into it. He also mentioned it's going to be like a Concorde jet. I think that only relates to how the aerodynamics of the pod will look. Um, very sleek, very pointed nose. I like this one because it has a little bit of a flat bottom. Um, so how do you power it? He mentioned it could be run by solar panels. So what I've got here is on the roof uh, a big array of solar panels. And I think this is the way uh, Elon Musk is, is thinking he could expand uh, renewable energy as well is through solar power on the roof because if they're flat it provides a great area to, to place the um, uh, to place the solar panels um, uh, and generate electricity a renewable electricity for a renewable transport system I think is very smart um, the other thing is how do you get up to the speeds how are you going to get these up to the speeds well we know uh, maglev trains and high-speed rail can get up to 200 miles per hour. And I'm using miles per hour because that's what it's been talked about. And I'm sorry to my Canadian comrades, but uh, I have to use American uh, right now. Uh, but America, come on, please, can we get on the metric system already? Uh, anyway, that's fine. Um, so you power it with solar panels or a grid electricity, which is you know cheaper than solar. Uh, for the time being, solar is dropping in prices. But how do you get rid of the wind resistance? Well, some people talk about evacuated tube. I don't think it's going to be evacuated tube. I think it's very much going to be, um, as Jean Gardy said, it's going to be air in the, in, the, in the loops. And so what you do is if you can get your wind, say up to 200 miles per hour, and your craft can go with no wind resistance or your pod can go with no wind resistance at 200 miles per hour very easily, uh, so then, once you start going forward, it's just like relative motion. Um, if you had a really strong tailwind in your car, you'd have almost no wind resistance, so you could go even faster. So how do you produce the wind speed inside the tunnel? Well, what I've done is I've put the idea together that there's jets on the side, and these are the jets that are run electrically um, from, the, uh, from the solar panels. I'm just going to zoom in here for a second. So the way these works, these work in double duty, and this has the, the, the final aspect that I'll talk about, which is the energy storage that Elon was, has mentioned in one of his conversations. Um, so, for example, um, say you have a, a pod coming in from the right here to the left. Well, this, this, uh, this turbine, this electric run turbine, will maintain the flow of wind uh, in a very high speed uh, through the system. Now, it's not beyond the doubt that we could get wind up to 200 miles per hour because jets, they push wind out at 550 miles per hour when they're flying in the air. So jets on, on the ground could maintain those types of speeds. Now, I don't know about the wind resistance inside, inside of the tunnel. It had to be very slick, very smooth. Um, that's, I just haven't looked at the numbers. I haven't looked at the pure numbers. I mean, all I know is this, this roof array here is about... 25 kilowatts worth of power. Now, 25 kilowatts in the top here, 25 kilowatts, another 25 kilowatts. Um, but I haven't looked at the physics. I haven't looked. At, I'm just looking to see how the concept could work together. Um, so this does double duty, though. Uh, uh, Elon Musk talked about energy storage. I'm a big fan of energy storage. It's going to have huge implications on in implementing renewable energy in our society. Very much needed. So what you do is you get during the day. You use the panels to run the run the pods and to run the turbine to get the wind going as fast as possible. So if you, can get the, if you can get the wind going as fast as possible, you then at night can draw on that wind to run the system uh, uh, by slowing down the wind a little bit. So the overall efficiency and, and, and speed of the system would drop during the evenings or at nighttime. However, it would still be able to generate electricity. So it is a form of, of energy storage. Uh, it's like having a, a wind turbine that could run in reverse to produce wind. Um, so that's what I've got. Um, I, I hope that um, I'm wrong in some cases. I hope that I hope that I'm surprised in some way. Uh, I've put together another longer track version where it's just a copy paste, copy paste down. Um, I think for land impacts, this definitely would be cheaper than high speed rail. Uh, high-speed rail, you have huge costs from purchasing land, 
So I think that's why it's going to be cheaper, is that you can put it on an elevated track. You could put it on a, on a ground as well if it's out in the prairies. Uh, but when you're getting into, say, California and highly dense populated areas, you can't run on level grade because it's just it's too expensive to buy all the land. Um, so with the closed container system and the loop like John Gardy has talked about, um, I really think it's a possibility. I really think it could work together. Uh, Concords run at, thir they used to run at 1300 miles per hour. Um, so with, with aerodynamics, super aerodynamics, with the wind flowing at 200, say 300 miles per hour, it's definitely doable. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how things will work out. So anyway, uh, hopefully that uh, provides some conversation. I would love to hear some more opinions. Um, uh, I hope I can't wait for the, the 12th of August to see what the initial plans are. Um, I think we really need a good transit system, uh, high-speed rail link uh, to really get people moving and get goods moving, uh, other than by train or by slow, slow train, car, even by air. I think these are good opportunities. And it's run renewably, so good clean electricity. Anyway, thanks so much for listening. Um, hopefully you'll hear some good comments and good conversation. Bye.